Hey everybody, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're gonna to do a video on structural shapes. So whether you're working in your garage, you got a side business going on, you're just now getting into steel construction or whatever, you know, whatever type of welding you're into, you're gonna be doing uh, or working with various types of structural shapes. Whether it's um, plate, bar, sheet, whatever the case may be, you have to know how it's gonna be called out on the prints or you have to know how uh, you know, to go get a piece of material or order a, a section that you need or order based off the material or develop a cut list. So we're, today we're just gonna go through and talk about the different structural shapes, how they're dimensioned and how they're called out. All right, so the first section we're gonna talk about is something called an I-beam. You guys are probably all familiar with what an I-beam looks like, but as you can see, there's a couple different variations of the I-beam. But what they all have in common is they all have a flange, top and bottom, and a web in the middle. So we have the S-beam, the I-beam, the H-beam, the T-beam. You know, to the, to the untrained eye, this may look like it's the same beam other than this is missing a flange down here. But that's not really the case. S, I, and T beam, these are more structural beams for putting up buildings. The S beam, the flange, and the web are gonna be roughly dimensionally the same. Whereas an I beam, the flange, is gonna be a little bit narrower than the web. Now with an H beam, uh, same thing once again, but as, you, as we can see where the flange meets the web, we have roughly a 90 degree angle, whereas in the case with the S-beam and the I-beam, we have more of a radius. I-beams are gonna be a little bit thicker in the flange than the S-beam, and the H-beam, like I said, they're pretty much gonna be dimensionally the same uh, as far as thickness. Now, H-beams are typically used for piles, so if you've ever driven down a highway and they're doing construction or building bridges, this is the shape that they're driving into the ground whereas your S-beams are gonna be more for column and girder applications, and then I-beams are also gonna be for structural flooring, roof structures, connection points, all that good stuff. And then the T-beam down here, what I've typically used this for is either bracing or flooring uh, in structural buildings. Now, a T-beam is simply nothing more than an S-beam that has been cut down the middle. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how these are gonna be called out on a set of prints or how you're gonna be able to order these. So we'll just use the general eye, eye shape uh, for this exercise. So typically what we have are, is a dimension here, and let's just call this 12. Okay, and let's say that uh, this is actually 30 pounds per linear foot. So this would be a W12 by 30. So this number right here, the W stands for wide flange beam, the 12 is going to be the nominal depth. So with most of your I-beams, this dimension is going to be rather close to 12. So when we say nominal, think of uh, your average two by four, right? When you go to the big box store and you buy a two by four, unless you get rough cut lumber, or lumber, it's not actually two by four inches. It's about an inch and five eighths by three and five eighths. Same thing with, the, with your beams. It's going to be roughly 12 inches. So it might be like 11.95 inches or 12.05 inches. It's gonna be really close to that 12 measurement. The number here indicates the weight per linear foot. Now this isn't gonna fluctuate at all. So if I had a W12 by 30 and I cut off exactly one foot and throw it on a scale, it's gonna hit 30 pounds. So likewise, if I had a T-beam, essentially all that is is the I-beam is cut in half, right? So we just get rid of this section here. So now with my T-section, if this was made from that original W12 by 30, this is now going to be a T6 by, you guessed it, 15. So that'll be your T6 by 15. Like I said, I've used this a lot for braces. So in between column sections, uh, a T-beam can typically be used versus using back-to-back -back angle iron, uh, depending on what the, the structural requirements are and what the engineer has specced out. So that's pretty much the, the, the T-beams, I-beams, and W-beams. Go back and review these real quick. So again, usually used for piles uh, driven into the earth. These are gonna be the structural shapes and these can be bracing or flooring attachments. It's kind of difficult to tell them apart, uh, but once you start seeing them and using them on a regular basis, it's gonna be much easier. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next section where we're gonna talk about channel iron. So think of this as just half an I-beam. Uh, we use channel for building a lot of trailers are made out of channel. There are also structural shapes that can be used in the building, say for a spandrel beam or a beam that joins two columns together if I-beams aren't being used. So there's, there's a lot of different uses for them, but the way that these are specced out is once again, up here, 
we have our flanges and this would be our web. So again, think half of an I-beam, but this is actually hot rolled in that shape. So these are dimensioned out very similar to an I-beam in the fact that we're going to use the nominal depth, but on the channel, it is the actual depth of that web. <clears throat> so let's say that this is 12 inches here. This would be uh, listed out on a set of prints as C12 by 20.7 <clears throat> or something to that effect. So it's going to be that actual depth. So you can put a tape measure across it and that is the actual dimension, uh, 12 by 20.7 and that's the pounds per linear foot once again. So if we were to able to cut one foot off of this, it would be 20.7. So if you have to match a piece of this channel, so you have a, a section that you have to either duplicate, reproduce, or repair, you call up your local steel supply shop or get on their, their website or get one of their structural shapes pamphlets, you would actually measure the thickness of the flange, the leg length here, and then the, the, the depth of your web, and you could figure out exactly what size and weight that channel is. Uh, so you can replace that with the, an exact replacement. And, these go all the way from, you know, you'd have two inch channel uh, by, you know, like maybe half a pound per linear foot, whatever the case may be, depending on the thickness of the web and the flange. So that's, that's how you would order that piece or get a new section. Uh, next up, let's talk about angle irons. These are very uh, simple shapes because we're, we only have a couple dimensions to work with. So we're gonna, let's say that this is a three inch by three inch piece of material here. This is our, uh, our angle iron is three by three. And let's say that this thickness here is, I don't know, let's go quarter of an inch because three by three by quarter, that's pretty, uh, pretty common section. So that's exactly how that's gonna be listed out on the print. You're, it's gonna say L three by three by quarter. So we do leg length by leg length by material thickness. And we can have unequal leg lengths too. So you can get a six by three. And let's just call this thickness here a, uh, a half an inch. Okay, so this, this piece is going to be L three by six by one half inch. And these can come in uh, standard feet length of 20, 40, and 60 foot, so depending. A lot of times when you order stainless and aluminum though, they're gonna be 12 foot sections. So keep that in mind when you're ordering the material uh, I usually, when I call up my steel supplier, I tell them how many linear feet that I need, and then they do their best to get within that parameter. Uh, most shops, you're gonna re be required to order a full stick, uh, or some of them will actually sell you a half stick. Some of the places you might go, they might have a remnant section where you can buy two or three foot, or they'll sell it to you by the pound, but most of your bigger suppliers, you're gonna have to buy a full stick. You might be able to get away with buying a half of a stick. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to square parts or square tubes. All right, so next up is going to be our square tube. Now, square tube comes in a, a variety of sizes all the way from, I mean, just as small as you can think, probably half inch, uh, maybe even smaller, all the way up to, you know, 24 by 24 inch sections. These are spec'd out fairly simple. Uh, again, we're just going to have a length or height. So let's call this one eight inches uh, just for instructional purposes. And let's say that this side is also eight inches. And let's say the, uh, the wall thickness here, we'll just call this one three eighths. So when you see this on a set of prints or you go to order it, you're gonna tell them you need a square tube or HSS as it's written on a set of prints. The HSS is hollow structural steel and then we just dimensioned it out, eight by eight by the thickness, so three eighths. Now you can also get this in rectangular square tube, it's gonna be the same thing, HSS, hollow structural steel, but let's say one side's a little bit bigger than the other, let's say that this side is 12 inches, so that's gonna be your 12 by eight by three eighths. So you can get this as an actual square, or you can get it rectangular. The dimensions are just gonna change depending on what you need, height, width, and then wall thickness is gonna be how it's dimensioned, how it's ordered. Once again, you're probably gonna get these in 20 foot sections unless you're hitting up your local hardware store, or big box store, you, you can usually get a four foot section of, I think up a inch and a quarter uh, by inch and a quarter. 
and then like 14 gauge. Uh, so you can go lower into material thickness depending. So you can actually get down to gauge sizes if you need to. Next up, we have pipe and tube. So a lot of people will get these confused. Pipe and tube are actually complete, or two completely different shapes. Uh, they're all gonna be dimensioned, uh, all your pipe is gonna be dimensioned by ID. So the major difference between pipe and tube is with pipe, something is flowing through it, whether it is a liquid or a gas, sometimes even a solid. I know there's, there's trash systems that run solid through there with air. Uh, so it's going to be all your dimensions are going to be based on the inside diameter because something is flowing through that. I need to maintain that internal diameter. Whereas with tube, so think of handrail or a structural shape, it's going to be measured by the outside diameter. Now with pipe, you're going to be, once again, we're talking nominal. So the inside dimension, like on a, a six inch schedule 40 is going to be roughly uh, five and seven eighths or five and 15 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, for all your pipe stuff, whereas tube, if I order that six inch OD, it's going to be six inches because that is the structural component. So when we do a lot of times with handrail, the top section of handrail and most of your grab rails is gonna be inch and a half tube, schedule 40, all your verticals are gonna be your inch and a half schedule 80, depending on uh, how, that's, how that's laid out, but that's gonna be your most typical applications for uh, tubing, handrails, grab rails, structural columns, anything like that. And that's all gonna be measured off OD. Now, when we get into thickness, it's actually referred to as schedule. And what I would like is if somebody in the comment section could actually uh, define schedule because schedule changes, right? So we have usually our typical ones that we deal with is uh, schedule 40, schedule 60, schedule 80, schedule 120. There's a bunch of different pipe schedules. Uh, and that's all, all that's saying is the thickness of that wall, the wall thickness and both your pipe and tube are going to be rated off schedule. But the weird thing is, that, and this is where I really don't understand it, is if I get some six inch schedule 40 and I buy some two, or two inch schedule 40, uh, pipe or tube, the wall thickness is completely different. So the schedule is gonna change based on the diameter of your pipe or tube. Now, if I order some pipe, as I, in, as I say, uh, like the schedule 40 or schedule 60, schedule 80, as I go up in schedules, the inside dimension is gonna stay the same. However, the outside dimension is going to grow larger. So the outside diameter of a six inch schedule 80 and a six inch schedule 40, they're gonna be the same internal diameter, but the outside diameter is gonna be bigger, right? Like uh, conversely with tube, if I order some six inch tube, schedule 40, six inch schedule 80, the outside dimension is always gonna remain that first dimension, that six inch. And as the schedule increases, the inside diameter is going to shrink because the wall thickness is getting thicker, but towards the inside. Okay, so with pipe, outside is gonna grow with, uh, with schedule as we increase the schedule. And with tube, the ID is gonna shrink as we increase our schedule. All right, so next up, we're gonna be talking about plate steel. Uh, so when we order this stuff, uh, typically we're gonna order it by width, length, and the material thickness. Now I have 48 by 96 by quarter drawn on here, but you can get this in a various uh, amount of shapes. So you can get to actually uh, 36 by 48, 36 by 96, 36 by uh, 112 and 144, it goes on and on and on. You can get them uh, four by eight, five by 10. There's a bunch of different variations you can get. So depending on the job that you're doing, see if they have something uh, that's closer to the size that you'll be working with. So you don't have to rip a bunch of material and uh, have a bunch of drops. You can actually get this in, in narrower widths, usually three, four, and five foot sections uh, as far as width, and then a bunch of different lengths. But it's always gonna be specced out your width, length, by material thickness. So for instance, this one would be a uh, 48 by 96 by quarter inch. And then there's various uh, types that you can get this in. So you can get this in diamond plate, which has the little raised edges. You guys have all probably seen them on truck boxes and a lot of thing, a lot of things in the, uh, the marine industry. They like to use a lot of uh, diamond plate aluminum. You can also get it in expanded metal. There's a bunch of different shapes and profiles, perforations or you know holes popped in there. So depending on what you're doing, uh, I think the sheet metal shop is a good place. You can check them out online. Uh, they're not a sponsor, but they have a whole bunch of different sheets and types that you can get uh, more custom than most uh, manufacturers typically have in stock on site. Fairly simple. If you've ever dealt with plywood, plywood is very, uh, very similar in specking that out. 
Next up is solid bar. So when we talk about solid bar, it's usually just the width by the thickness, and then we can cut different plates or gussets or you know whatever out of here that you need. So it's gonna be your width by the material thickness when you order that and just say, you know, I need a piece of uh, bar stock and then width and thickness. Uh, the other dimension is going to be the length. Once again, for most steel applications, this will be a 20, 40, or 60 foot. Uh, your aluminum is going to be 12 and 24 and so on. So bar stock's fairly simple. A lot of times when this is marked out on the, uh, on the print, and it could be, you can make this from a sheet piece of sheet steel also, it's going to be PL. And then there'll be like the width by the length by the material thickness. And this is going to change depending on the application, but it's usually noted on the prints as PL so that you know that that's a plate and those three dimensions that they're giving you are length, width, and thickness. All right, on to the, uh, the remaining two pieces. We have some solid stock. This is going to be very similar. Uh, you can get these in rectangular portions as well for the square stock, but usually it's just length, width, um, and that's going to be actually your thickness on both sides and then the length that you need it, or I'm sorry, height, width, and then the length is going to be, you know, your 20 foot sections or depending on the type of material that you're going to order. Same thing with our round bar over here. This is going to be solid stock and it's just going to go off the outside dimension. So you're going to call them up and say, hey, you know, I need a piece, I need a piece of a uh, three inch solid round. So they're typically refer to this as solid round or solid square, but these are both going to be, uh, examples of solid stock. Uh, so that, that pretty much covers all this, the most common structural shapes. Uh, if you get into like pre-manufactured metal buildings and stuff, there's something called a Z purlin, and that is going to be something like that. And that's gonna be listed as like a P and then whatever this height is. So let's say that that's a 10, 10 inch piece. So that'll be like a P10. So that's gonna be your, your height from the top to the bottom of the Z. That's not gonna be nominal. That's actually going to be the actual depth. So that, I mean, that pretty much covers all the different structural shapes. Once again, it's really good to go through these. Make sure you understand how they're ordered, what size are spec'd out, because if you're in a shop and the, uh, the supervisor says, hey, I need you to go get me a, a three by three quarter piece of angle, you know exactly what you're going to go, go to get and how to dimension that out. Take your tape measure with you, check it and all that. It's also a good thing to get one of those little uh, keychain thickness gauges because especially once you get into gauge material, it's hard to check that with a tape measure. So you have to carry a dial caliper or something with you. So get one of those little sheet metal uh, thickness gauges. They're available on Amazon. They're only a couple bucks. It's an add-on item. Uh, if you guys are looking for more information on structural shapes and designs, components, how they're used, where they're used, you can always check out AISC.org. That's the American Institute of Steel Construction. There's just a plethora of information on there. You can become a member for free. They're not a sponsor of this video, but it is a, an additional resource where you can go find more information. As a, like I said, this is kind of an introductory on structural shapes, how they're dimensioned and some of their uses. So hopefully you found this uh, video educational as well as entertaining. We appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to drop them down in the comments section. And until next time, make every well better than your last.